I want to invite you to a very special event. It's happening November 10th and 11th in Los Angeles, and it's called Sister Giant, Women, Nonviolence, and Birthing a New American Politics. You know, the U.S. Congress is comprised of 16.8% women, and on the state legislative level, it's less than 24% women. We have half the human race, and yet when you look at the domestic and foreign policies of the United States, the decisions about those policies are made by less than 17% women. How might the world be different if, in fact, that fact were different? Not only are women somehow disconnected from the political process more than they should be, you know, with Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony and others fought for women's suffrage, they thought having sacrificed as much as they sacrificed and worked as hard as they worked and suffered as much as they suffered. They thought once women were given the right to vote, which they finally were, the 19th Amendment in 1921, they thought that everything else would pretty much take care of itself, that women would run for office and become half of the problem-solving machinery of the United States. And yet things haven't quite worked out that way. Although statistically, when a woman does run for office, she wins as often as a man does, women are not running for office in the United States at the same rate as men are. And there's some reasons for this. I think a lot of those reasons are psychological and emotional and even spiritual. It's not just the external facts, which of course are important. We have children, etc. But there's something else going on. Because politics today is so different than everything that a feminine heart stands for. It has no poetry, it has no love, it has no kindness. And a lot of women, the best among us, want nothing to do with that. I also feel, not only as a woman, but also as someone who myself has participated and has been professionally involved in the higher consciousness movement for almost three decades. And by this, I mean people who are interested in personal growth, recovery, spirituality, yoga, and so forth that some of the best, edgiest, coolest conversation about who we are as people and what we're doing on this earth is actually centered in the higher consciousness movement. People who are not only seeking to transform our lives from the place of our own hearts, who not only are seeking to transform our own lives, but the world around us from a place of love, from a place where we recognize that it is internal transformation that is key to external transformation. Some of the people involved in the higher consciousness community are the most disconnected from politics. And there's a reason for this. Even though people are transforming things in every corner of our society, the American people are pouring our hearts and our new thoughts, our thinking, our technology, our, our, our love into every single area from business to education to technology, so many areas where you see the best of what we're capable of pouring out into the world. You don't see it in politics. Why? Because politics at this point is not a container for our best. It doesn't invite us to be our better selves. In fact, it hardly permits candidates and people in office to be their better selves. If that's going to change, it's going to be because people change it. And I believe that both women and those of us who are involved in the higher consciousness movement have something to contribute to this shift in conversation. There's a new consciousness in the United States because there's a new consciousness in the world. And this new consciousness needs a politics to match. On November 10th and 11th, we are joining in Los Angeles for this new conversation. A new conversation about who we are as people, a new conversation about where America can go now, and where women and people involved in issues of spirituality, recovery, yoga, and so forth might be part of this new conversation. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the psychological and emotional and spiritual issues particularly that women deal with, and even thinking about the idea that they might one day run for office. We are going to be going deep into certain issues. We're going to be talking about child poverty. The child poverty rate in the United States is 23.1%. Out of 35 developed nations in the world, the United States ranks second only to Romania in how much child poverty we have. We have the highest incarceration rate of any country in the world. We incarcerate more of our people than any country in history. And a very serious issue for every conscious American, whether they are on the left or the right of the political spectrum, Citizens United, a decision made by the Supreme Court of the United States, which now allows unlimited and anonymous corporate donations, moneyed interests able to just flood our political campaigns and flood our policymaking decisions. What do we have? We have a situation now in which it could be argued that the American government is basically up for sale. 
If this is going to change, it's going to change because we have a constitutional amendment, not only federal legislation calling for public financing, but also a constitutional amendment that establishes that corporations do not have the rights of personhood. If these issues compel you, if the various things having to do with women running for office, having to do with a higher consciousness perspective, you know, when it comes to people in the higher consciousness community, we are a constituency. We just don't act like it. If you resonate with any of what I've been saying, I hope you'll join us November 10th and 11th in Los Angeles, Sister Giant, a new consciousness and a new politics. Women, nonviolence, and birthing a new American politics. I think it's time.